In this session, we're going to unpack the concept of racial capitalism. Racial capitalism sees capitalism as dependent on racial inequality and race as integrally tied to the capitalist system. The concept of racial capitalism comes from the work of the political theorist Cedric J. Robinson. In 1983, Robinson published the book Black Marxism, The Making of the Black Radical Tradition. Robinson was writing the book while on a sabbatical in London, and there he heard South African activists use the word racial capitalism to talk about South Africa under apartheid rule. The scholar Robin D.G. Kelly says that Robinson took the term, developed it from a description of a specific system, the specific example of South Africa under apartheid, and he broadened the concept into an analysis to become a general history of modern capitalism. So what is racial capitalism? For Robinson, as a material force, capitalism as a social structure is permeated by racialism. From its very beginnings, the development, the organization, and the expansion of capitalist society pursued essentially racial directions. Cedric Robinson argues that the modern world system of racial capitalism is one that was always dependent on slavery, violence, and genocide. Robinson's book, Black Marxism, draws on its theory and ideas from Marxist theory, but Robinson is also critical of Marxism. One of the things he says is that ultimately, Marxism at, at its basis is a Western construction. It's a very particular theory that comes out of the experience of European people, civilization, social orders and cultures. Rather than being a universal philosophical method, Robinson argues that the analytical presumptions, the philosophical origins and the historical perspectives of Marxism are at its base Western. European Marxists have often assumed that what they are discussing, that the kind of processes, historical processes and structures, the bourgeoisie, the proletariat, the ideas, that these ideas can be elaborated and extended to world historical development, that they can be used to explain cases and examples far beyond the Western experience, rather than being specific to the European experience. Another area that Robinson is critical of Marxism is he says that Marx did not account for the racial aspect of capitalism. So let's talk about a few areas where Cedric Robinson is critical of Marx's theory. One area is in Marx's conception of revolutionary subjects. Marx saw the urban working class European proletariat as being the motor force of history. For Marx, the proletariat were the revolutionary class. When we talked about Fanon, we noted how he said that the peasantry and urban lumpen in decolonizing countries were the main revolutionary force. And he wanted to expand out Marx's notion of the proletariat to look at these other groups who Marx had had more of a negative and derogatory view of. Fanon wanted to include those in what the notion of a revolutionary class was. Now Robinson says that when we look at the world scale of capitalism, we actually have a more complex capitalist world system than the European model that was the basis for Marx's analysis. And when we look at that more complex world system, we see that there are other revolutionary forces emerging as well, ones that Marx and Western Marxists could barely anticipate. One of these was the emergence of the black radical tradition, both in the African diaspora and also on the African continent itself. Another area where 
Robinson diverged from Marx was on the question of feudalism and capitalism. Robinson said that capitalism was not just a negation of feudalism in the way that Marx had described it, but rather we had to understand it as an extension of feudal relations into modern global political and economic relations. So if, if you recall in the Communist Manifesto and in his other writings, Marx had quite a, uh, a cut and dry view of feudalism giving way to capitalism, capitalist society and one society superseding the others in this kind of staged approach. But Robinson doesn't see feudalism and capitalism as, as quite so antagonistic to one another. Rather, he sees uh, capitalism as growing out of the relations that are set up under feudalism. Robinson argues that from its very beginnings, uh, European civilization was constructed on antagonistic differences. So in contrast to the kind of homogenous European society that is often imagined in theories like Marxism, where class is the only uh, difference separating the, the burghers and the bourgeoisie and the proletariat and the peasants, Robinson argues that right from the beginnings of European civilization, there were also racial differences. In fact, he says the very first European proletariats, pro proletarians, such as the Irish, the Jews and the Roma, these were racial subjects. Now, what happens is as capitalism becomes established, European civilization begins to shape these regional, subcultural, dialectical differences that it had already exploited in order to enshrine inequality, it begins to exaggerate these differences into racial differences. And he gives a few examples, for instance, in the early Middle Ages, groups like the Slavs and the Tatars were seen as the racially inferior slaves. And we can see with the expansion of colonialism in the 16th century, that third world peoples in Asia and Africa and the Middle East and elsewhere begin to fill this role. In Black Marxism, Cedric Robinson is concerned to think about the role of slavery in the creation of racial capitalism. And he argues that the Atlantic slave trade and the slavery of the New World were integral to the modern world economy. Marx himself had been uh, very concerned with slavery as a key engine of what he called primitive accumulation. And primitive accumulation refers to the original ways in which massive amounts of dispossession and exploitation provide the basis for the foundations of capitalism. Uh, Marx argued that uh, African workers were turned into property and African labor power as a slave labor had been integrated already into 19th century manufacturing and industrial capitalism. So slave labor was really for Marx at the basis of industrial capitalism and it sustained the world market beyond Europe whose capital accumulation further developed industrial production. This argument was also made by others such as the Caribbean historian Eric Williams and Williams argued that it is sort of expanding Marx's idea on the ways in which labor produ produces value. Williams was interested in how slave labor in the Americas produced value. And this value was not just located in the Caribbean islands or America or uh, the, the sites in which uh, the slave economy existed, but it was also reinvested back in Britain and in France and in the places in the mother countries um, the fruits of that slave labor was also reinvested and stimulated commercial development back in those places. So key to the idea of racial uh, capitalism is the foundation of the plantation economy. So just to go over in, in, in brief detail how this plantation economy emerged. When the British colonizers first colonized the Americas, 
they actually began by exporting colonized Irish peoples rather than African slaves at the very beginning as indentured peasants to work. And, and at this time, um, tobacco was the main staple of the colonies. Well into the 1620s and 30s, tobacco was still the main staple. Um, and over time, it attracted more English and more French planters. In uh, the period of the 1630s, there was a glut of tobacco and then prices started to decline and the British colonizers realized that tobacco would not be a, a sustainable commodity that would be able to vastly increase their wealth. And so they began a search for a new staple and ultimately the staple that filled that role was sugar and the sugar plantation uh, economy began in the late 1630s with um, a huge expansion across the Americas, the setting up of plantations, the bringing in of planters, the bringing in of, um, of, of the technology that was required for the sugar plantation. And then what really was needed to meet this massive expansion was labor. And so at this time, the English mercantile and planter bourgeoisie turned to West Africa for this labor. Robinson shows how between the 15th and the 19th centuries, between 15 and 20 million African people were brought to the New World. We don't know the exact figures and even up to 50 million has been estimated, but uh, Robinson uh, sees it closer to 15 to 20 million people. So what we can take from this is that when Marx talked about the development of the productive forces in England and Europe, the Industrial Revolution, which was really key to his ideas and his theorizing, one of the things that is not so brought out and one of the things that Robinson really uh, makes clear in his study is that capital accumulation and the assist, capital accumulation for the Industrial Revolution, as well as the establishment of staple industries in North America, the industries that were to continue on uh, for the long term, these were dependent on slavery and then post-slavery as well in the ongoing exploitation of black workers after slavery was formally ended. So what was the result of this? Robinson says the result was death and degradation of African peoples, many of whom did not survive the treacherous journey across the Atlantic, and the degradation of their social institutions as well as the impact of this on Africa's economy, the underdevelopment and perpetual consignment to poverty of many people within Africa itself. So we can see the importance of this notion of racial capitalism and Cedric Robinson's work to black movements today, especially the rise of radical black movements in recent years, such as Black Lives Matter, abolitionist movements, these all are part of the black radical tradition that Robinson was describing. Robinson's identification of black radical insurgency as what he saw as a key revolutionary force, this, is, this identification holds true today as well under conditions of ongoing racial capitalism.